This is a fun video for jobs and classes. In Final Fantasy XIV, you've got a bunch of jobs to choose from, and I've already made a video talking about that. Problem is, now everything is completely different. So <laughs> here I am again with all of Welcome the to jobs to help you pick what you want to play. You've got your tanks, including one, one new guy. They're the ones fearlessly charging headfirst into danger's way. And luckily, Shadowbringers made that even more straightforward. Simply turn your tank stance on on and you are now tanking turn it off and you aren't wow speaking of danger these are the healers always be and nice fruit. to them you don't want to know Very what long. happens when they get angry oh thank you oh, no, that's not what i meant Shadowbringers gave the healers a super special power big heal mode. The melee DPS are here to cry about mechanics that keep them away from the boss. So in Shadowbringers, they gave the melee two free I don't need positional anymore buttons, but they still complain. And these are the casters. They go big shooty boom boom magic. What did they get in Shadowbringers? More big shooty boom booms. The ranged can run around without any loss of DPS, and they've got a new friend who everybody loves except the other ranged. Anyway, let's go look at the jobs. Dark Knight, it uses a big ass sword. Play this job if you wanna use a big ass sword. It's got a special stance you gotta keep up, obviously called the dark side. You keep this up by using edge of shadow and flood of shadow, of course. And you can even reach inside your soul and take out your inner darkness and he can fight along with you. And it's got a special mode delirium where you can spam heavy hitting attacks like blood spiller or quietus, which otherwise would cost blood gauge. Yeah, it's got a blood gauge. For mitigation, it has the Blackest Knight, which is a shield you put on yourself and lets you use a blood gauge ability for free if it breaks. And its invincibility is called Living Dead, which you activate it first and then you have to die. Once you die, then you're walking dead and you're actually kind of not dead but somebody has to heal you up to full, otherwise you really do die. Gunbreaker. These guys were the personal guards of Queen Gunhilder herself. Who is that? I don't know. Gunbreaker is what you would get if you wanted to play a tank, but you also were like, I, I really like DPS. It's got a three-part combo, but it actually has a separate three-part combo inside of another three-part combo. It, it, it kind of makes sense. It has a powder gauge with cartridges in it. The regular combo will earn you cartridges, and then you can spend the cartridges in order to do the special 1-2-3 combo. So it's very clicky. It's a very clicky fun job. Its invincibility is called Superbolide. Basically, you sh Am I going to get Carpal Tunnel playing this one? Yes. No. Maybe. Okay, I think I got my answer. Shoot yourself and now you can't get hurt anymore because if I hurt myself, the enemies can't hurt me. Paladin, it's got a sword and a shield. To be a paladin is to be protection itself. Paladin is really good at party utility and helping your friends not die. It's got a physical damage phase and a magical damage phase. During your physical phase, you've okay, got so here's a my question. buff, and then you've got a dot combo, and then a regular combo. That I, I know paladins aren't really DPS. Called Royal Authority. And this but are they, are they times sick? In a row. Then you go into like, your magical cool? phase, where you can attack at ranged with heavy hitting magic attacks, and a big AoE attack again can feed You've got the wings to protect Paladin your entire is cool to party. Watch. You can also heal yourself or heal a target. And its invincibility is hollowed ground, which just makes you straight up invincible. You can't get hurt. Warrior. It smashes. It's got an axe and it smashes with the axe. Warrior doesn't care about mitigating damage. So, so are they tanking? They all anyway. tank with two-handed weapons? Not it. all, but... Hit me. It's got two combos. One that applies a damage buff and one that builds its wrath gauge more. It's got a special mode, Inner Release, that allows it to spam the heavy hitting attacks like Fel Cleaver, decimate both the single target and AOE attacks. See, tanking with a two handed weapon is like use infuriate to augment them. Warrior is all about building up the gauge so you can use it on attacks to just smash more. It's got a fun mitigation called vengeance. Like, where if you I'm get a hit, tank, I think sword and shield right back, or it can increase its HP even more because above 100k health isn't enough. It's yeah, minus one exactly. is called home 
Gang, where you tether it's to fail an RP, enemy, dude. and Tanking now your with two HP is fail can't RP. go below one. Samurai, they wield a katana and offer <laughs> zero party utility besides their big damage. Samurai's core rotation works around three separate combos. The Each music time you finish a combo, you earn a Samurai. sticker, or otherwise known as a sen. You spend these sen on powerful iaijutsu moves, and the move changes depending on how many stickers you had when you use it. If you use it with one, you get a dot. With two, you get an AoE attack in front of you, and with three, you get a heavy hitting single target attack. It also has another resource called Kenki that you build up and you use on heavy hitting attacks. You notice a lot of these are heavy hitting attacks, it's because all of Samurai's attacks do it. Shadowbringers gave Samurai even more big attacks, like Shoha, an attack Wait, you so can is only the tank use or a DPS? you gather up three meditate stacks. It also has two separate AoE combos and overall flows very oh, well okay. from one combo to the next, building up your resources and spending them. Monk, these guys are all about throwing away the weapons and instead your body is the weapon. Monk has two combos. Sounds straightforward? It is. Dude, but Jesse, each the one body of those Ventura. has a positional requirement. Every single one. All the other melees only have a handful of positionals. Monk takes that and says, I want oh, all positionals. Shadowbringers also gave Monk a fourth. I think positionals stack, are so which cool. Which makes them attack even faster and harder than before. Dark Age of Camelot had like a all positional stuff. Chakra that it can use on a single target attack or a ranged attack. And other buffs that mostly work around its two separate combos. I bet it, it makes really Monk really hard damage, to play though, still right? Offers some party utility with a physical damage buff to the party. Dragoon, it uses a spear. They kill dragons. And the reason why they're so sharp is because even if a dragon eats them, they can still kill the dragon on the way out. Dragoon also has two combos, but instead these are longer combos. Most of the other physical jobs in the game are three part combos. Dragoon is five. It's a very static rotation that you're going to do one combo and then the other combo and you're always going to stick to that, but it has a whole lot of off global cooldowns that you're going to use Wait, in is them cool. to keep it interesting. It centers around keeping up a buff called Blood of the Dragon. However, when you collect two eyes of the dragon and you activate Gare two eyes, white light, you white unlock dragon. Life of the Dragon, where you dragon. glow red instead and you unlock even more powerful heavy hitting attacks, including Star Diver. It's got a bunch of different jump attacks that range from jumping to the opponent and back to where you were, or jumping over to the opponent. Wait, I kind of want to play Dragoon. Or off the edge. Dragoon offers some cool party utility, like a crit buff to every. Dragoon is the rep palant of this game? Oh, really? Give their pala extra damage buff. Ninja. Oh, and they buffed the pala Do you damage? know Naruto? Well, me either. Ninja's got a really cool mechanic called ninjutsu. You have to get if you combined a cowboy with a Naruto. Well, me either. Ninja's got a really cool mechanic called ninjutsu. You have three ninjutsu abilities, which, depending on the order you push them in, will change the attack that it performs. You have things like an attack speed buff or an AoE on the ground that looks like dirt. Shadowbringers added a cool effect where you can augment some of the ninjutsu abilities. If you use Kasatsu before activating them, it'll change your fire breath into a huge fire tornado, or it'll I'm change going to your change ice my fire breath, breath into a fire tornado. Shurikens, like I'll Greninja. show them. You also can Take tap into your secret Hokage arts and my activate Hokage Bunshin, arts. which will be a shadow of yourself, and it will mimic every attack that you do. It's also got a really good party buff called Trick Attack, which will make the target take extra damage from the entire party. Ninja's Ninja the hardest. Has a lot of interesting mechanics to its Part of me wants to play like something that's really Combos, difficult to play but you might have to devote an extra brain cell to remember but then i remember that i've played a rat paladin for Machinist 15 years is what you would get if you combine so. a cowboy with a gundam with a terminator this is the ranged with the highest damage and the one with the least amount of rng in the rotation and i don't really have to say any more about it because you can summon a freaking mech and Wait, while what? you're doing all of your attacks, you're overheating, you go into your overheat gauge, Gundam you're spamming Wing. your cool abilities that give you your cooldowns back, you to watch you're hitting this video. buttons it's like a, really a freaking man, man, and your, your mech the is over there punching shit. Abilities. Oh, and you have a flamethrower. Need I Thanks, say Des, more thank really? You I mean, for dude. AoE, you got some it. other cool stuff, like overheat will now actually be a crossbow instead. You got a drill that you shoot out, like a giga drill breaker, and you have a special button that makes it guarantee it crits. All of your regular combo is now superheated mode always. This job is all about balancing your battery gauge and your heat gauges to use all of your cool special boom explodey powers. Bard, this is the job with the bow and arrow. Every MMO has one, this is ours. But not only can you shoot arrows, you can Except also for sing wow. songs and help your party members do things. 
and its rotation Dude, is Bards in the middle and Dark Age of Camelot were badass. With an RNG rotation, it cycles were healers, through three were different badass. song modes, and each song has a different effect on your rotation. Mostly, you're keeping your dots up and spamming burst shot for procs on Refulgent Arrow. You've also got a new gauge called the Soul Gauge, which is used on Apex Arrow, and it does more damage the higher the gauge. Apex, for utility, you've got stuff like a heal buff or damage buff or remove a bad thing on somebody, and of course a party damage reduction. Dancer. This is the new guy. It uses chakrams that it throws around and kills its enemies with belly dancing. It has the lowest personal DPS, but it can super buff its dance part. It has two separate dances, and when you activate one, you go through steps like a Simon Says game. Standard step will be an AoE a dancer attack like a Fury and Warrior? activate a damage boost for you and See, your dance part. I, I always felt like Fury Warriors and WoW should have been like this. this will be they weren't the best the damage, party. but its they made everybody else's damage better. Dependent. Like, you would drop battle standards and be like the each leader, of those you know? can proc another attack. And I always thought Fury Warriors and WoW should have been like this. Now proc fan attacks. And then the fan attacks can proc a final fan attack. So there's a lot of layers of RNG to the TBC. rotation. Kinda it also true. has a separate gauge Red that you use on like a that, big hitting attack called In Saber Dance. Dance. And for movement, Except it Red has Palin's three pumped, separate dude. dashes like that it can time, use. Dude, Black game. Mage. It uses a magic stick and explosions and a whole lot more explosions. This is the magic version of the Selfish DPS class and specializes in longer cast times that deal super high damage with the trade-off that you're trying to minimize your overall movement. Black Mage's rotation goes through an ice phase where it regenerates mana and a fire phase where it spends all of its mana on the really heavy hitting attacks. Shadowbringers added a finisher to the fire phase called Despair. Black Mage has a continuous damage buff you want to keep up called Enochian, okay. which allows you to use like the heavier like a, hitting spells. And if you have like it up warlock. long enough, it unlocks a special Actually, you know what this kind of looks like? Attack this looks Xenoblossy. like an Eldritch. There's Dark now also a way to keep your ice phase up during damage downtime. Summoner. It uses a book, but it's not trying to be smart with it. it. It's mostly picture books. Summoner is our pet DPS job. There's Ifrit for single target, Garuda for Summoner's AoE, and Titan for... Eh. Summoner's rotation works on a two-minute cycle of various phases that you go through. There's Dreadworm Trance, where you invoke Bahamut's Aether, and you unleash it in a big Death Flare attack. After this, you're able to summon Bahamut and command him to do big Akmorn attacks. Wait, and is it Bahamut him, or Bahamut? Phoenix to do special fire moves Phoenix. and heal the party while it's out. Also, two of your spells become super. I used Phoenix to pronounce Phoenix Phoenix because I didn't Summoner know how to pronounce it. Summoner is also one of two jobs that can raise dead party members. Though you either have to hard cast it or save your swift cast for it. Red Mage. It uses a sword with a focus thing attached to it. This is the job that combines Dude, black magic and white magic together in order to do magic casting while also doing physical damage as well. Red Mage is special because every other spell that it casts RDM is instant is OP. with Dude, the dual weird cast RDMing. Trait. So you one. will hard cast the shorter spells and then instant cast the longer ones. You'll do this while alternating building your white and black mana and once you have enough you can go in for the melee combo finishing it off with either a Ver Holy or Ver Flare big attack and then another final big attack called okay, Scorch. So, so a Red Mage is like a AoE rotation using Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow 2, and then instant casting Impact. And then you have an AoE melee attack as well. Ren Mage is the only DPS with a good single target heal, and it's the other DPS that can battle raise. And because of dual cast, you can instant raise people. White Mage. Okay, so Red Mage, so, so, Red Mage does everything? I think he literally just listed every every ability that could possibly happen in the game. What the hell was that? He can res, he can melee, he can range, he can AoE, like what? He can buff everybody else's damage? The only thing he can't do is tank. The DPS isn't that high though? Okay. That's good. I, I like that. Like like he like buffs everybody else's damage and that kind of thing. Oh, he doesn't buff everybody else's damage? Maybe I miss maybe I miss red. Just use GPS. A hybrid is never optimized though since balance. Uh like a hybrid tax. I always think that's good. Like they don't they don't have to 
Whatever. Let's just keep watching. It uses a It does pain. buff physical damage. Okay. White mages draw on the aether all around them from nature in order to do really big bursty heals or regen. So white mage is like a priest, heals, right? It's very straightforward. You got cure one like and cleric, cure two type for class. single target. You've got medica for AOE. Medica 2 for an AoE regen, and Cure 3 for a big AoE heal, but very close around you. In Shadowbringers, they added some instant abilities that use up lilies from the Lily Gauge. And when you use up three lilies, lilies it unlocks a Flatus Misery, which is a huge AoE damage nuke. White Mage's oh shit ability is the wings. You you sprout wings. beautiful wings from your back, and now everybody around you takes less damage, and all of your healing is super mode. Scholar, they use a book because they're so smart, and they want everybody else to know how smart they are. Scholar specializes in shielding the party from all the damage in the first place. And it is the pet healer that we have in this game. For single target heals, you got Physic, a small single heal. You also have Adlo, DPS which is a heal list. plus I'm not a shield super on interested a single in target. It. And you have Sucker like for an AoE heal plus a shield. And I just there play are whatever abilities I like to play. that can manipulate the shields. Emergency Thank tactics you, will change the shield into a heal. Recitation will guarantee that it crits so you can have a big shield. And deployment tactics will spread the shield to nearby party members. Chain stratagem is Scholar's utility. It will raise the critical hit rate on the enemy for everybody. Scholar's other resource, Aether Flow, can be used on certain abilities, like an instant single target heal, a party AoE heal, and a placeable shield that reduces damage taken and heals the party. Scholar's super move is an upgraded fairy. Tier lists are irrelevant in this game. I think tier lists are irrelevant in regular like fairy game, and AoE shield. To be honest. Or you could just eat your fairy and get a whole bunch of Aether Flow to spend. Astrologen. It uses a globe of stuff with cards on it. They heal by looking up at the stars Dragoon and no planets balls. and sparkly things. They're also able to switch between a shield so mode a or a kind of mode, it, right? depending on which healer they're paired with. It has a normal single target heal and an aspected single target heal that either shields or regens. It's also got a party AoE or an aspected party AoE that either shields or regens. And then there's the whole card system, which it is able to draw upon and buff all the party members damage. Once Twisted it gets fate. enough different types of seals, Okay, so we have Yu-Gi-Oh, we have Pokemon. Time. An Astrologian's okay. super heal move We had Dragon Ball Z, Neutral that was the monk. Sect, which will change all of your aspected spells to activate both we the had, shield uh, and uh, Naruto, the regen at that was the, the ninja. Time as well as buff all the heals in general. And that's it. That is we had all Gundam the Wing, the, the machinist, right? keep in right? mind, you can play all of these jobs on the same character. We that had is uh, the, the Samurai, Samurai Final Jack. All of the jobs can do all of the content in the game. What is a Samurai, what is a samurai a anime? I don't know. Special things. Like if you want a solo old Desert. content, you know, Red Mage or Paladin are probably a little bit better at that type of thing. So, the best advice is just pick which one looks really cool to you, and you'll be more motivated to get good at it. So this video will be good for a little while until the next expansion comes out and completely changes it all over again. Okay, bye. Nice. Guys, is this it? Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Okay. Um, so here's, here's how I feel after watching that video. Um... 14 is well balanced, and is, Yeah, see, I, I feel very strongly about this, even in, even in WoW. Like classic WoW, like I, I'm, I'm super not about the whole like, oh, you have to go with this group or you can't bring this class, or you can't bring that or yeah. I think it's, I think it's all like horse crap, honestly. Like uh, I, I feel really, really strongly about that. I have cleared all the content in the game as, as a class that everybody thinks is like the worst. You know what I mean? Please watch this. It's very short and funny with good info.